When it comes to war, man never hesitates to experiment with the strangest of ideas. As it turns out, we have even tried to use insects as weapons against our foes, and this was attempted as early as the ancient Roman era when the legions of Caesar would lob beehives from their catapults upon groups of enemy soldiers. The scientific term for it is entomological warfare, and it involves the use of insects to either spread a deadly pathogen such as cholera or plague viruses, or it uses crop-eating insects to cripple the enemy's food supplies. This list takes a look at some of the most bizarre attempts to weaponize insects. Number 10. Bee Bombs – Used by Ancient Roman Legions Anyone who has been bitten by a bee is fully aware of what these little devils are capable of when provoked. In their bizarre attempts to weaponize insects, the Roman legions would often use this to their advantage by using catapults to hurl beehives over the walls of enemy fortresses. Terrified and unable to fight back, the Roman forces would become easy targets for Roman artillery and archers. Romans even used bees on their ships. They would throw specially designed clay jars filled with bees on the decks of their enemies, forcing some desperate sailors to jump into the sea. However, the Romans got a taste of their own medicine when they tried to siege the Greek town of Themyscira. The Greek soldiers, who were outnumbered and under danger of being pushed into a corner, threw hundreds of beehives upon the Romans trying to take over the town. Also, there are historical records of poisonous honey being used to defend certain villages of Turkey from both Greek and Roman invasions. In one case, while Greek soldiers were looting villages near Trapezus, Turkey, they found some hives filled with honey. After they joyfully consumed the honey, they started to lose their senses and began vomiting. They could not fight and were killed in the thousands. A similar case happened sometime later when the Roman soldiers under the leadership of the great Pompey tried to invade the Trapezion region of Turkey. The locals were aware that honey produced during certain times of the year was naturally poisonous and cleverly laid down hives filled with honey along the village streets. Unsuspecting Roman soldiers ate the honey and fell ill, becoming easy targets for the Heptacometus warriors. Number 9. Scorpion Bombs Used to Defend the Fortress of Hatra Believe it or not, the most bizarre attempts to weaponize insects dates way back more than you think. 2,000 years ago, when the Roman Emperor Septimus Severus had set his sights on conquering Mesopotamia, he brought with him an army of several thousand soldiers. The desert fortress of Hatra stood in his way, a giant fort with a five-mile defense perimeter and a moat sandwiched between 40-foot high walls. Hold up inside were King Barsamia and his citizens, who were not prepared to go down without giving the Romans a battle of a lifetime. And they did, hurtling down hundreds of state-of-the-art scorpion grenades from the top of the fort walls. These were actually earthenware vessels loaded with deadly desert scorpions. Any wildlife expert will tell you that desert scorpions such as the Iraqi Deathstalker are not to be toyed with. The sting of a venomous scorpion can cause extreme pain, even death. It did not take long for the Romans to succumb to the terror of thousands of these deadly insects raining upon them, and they eventually abandoned their siege. Number 8. Sniffer Bees That Sniff Out Landmines While it may sound like one of the dumbest attempts to weaponize insects, but considering we already have dogs and electronic devices to carry out the deed, biologists in Croatia who developed and trained a new strain of sniffing bees claim these insects can detect landmines and IEDs faster than sniffer dogs and from as far as three miles away. Apparently, these bees were trained in an effort to purge Croatia of hidden landmines, which were planted during the Croatian War of the Independence and are estimated to cover more than 684 square miles of Croatian territory. Biologists and beekeepers worked together over a period of three years to develop the special bees. They trained the bees to search for the smell of explosives by mixing that smell in a sugary solution they feed to the bees. 
Over time, the bees acquire a sense of smell that is tuned to sniffing out landmines and similar explosive devices. Number 7. Sniffer Bees That Detect Illegal Drugs We have probably realized by now that bees are awesome, since they can produce honey, attack our enemies, and even sniff out bombs. But their race to become the most amazing bug doesn't end there. Since these bees have a sharp olfactory sense which is comparable to sniffer dogs, they are also the perfect candidate when it comes to replacing the dogs as portable drug detectors. With marijuana getting legalized in places all over the world, the dogs that were trained to detect marijuana will now be hard to retrain in order to find other substances such as heroin or cocaine. Also, training of new sniffer dogs requires a lot of time. But research has proved that bees are the perfect substitute to dogs as they too respond to the same kind of conditional training that dogs are given. In the bizarre attempts to weaponize insects, bees in various experiments were able to differentiate between heroin and cocaine, which means they can one day prove as a safer and more portable alternative to dogs. This will be a great help to police and airport security all over the world, as it is both an inexpensive and low-maintenance alternative to canines. Number 6. DARPA's Cyber Bug Project DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Project Association, is the top secret research wing of the U.S. Army, and it is known to be working on a variety of projects in neurological science, robotics, futuristic guns, and other cool stuff including having made bizarre attempts to weaponize insects. But one of their projects is rather unique. It involves hacking into the body of an insect to allow a human operator to control the bug's actions through a controller. The bugs are controlled by inserting metal electrodes into certain parts of the body, like the brain and specific muscles that are responsible for flapping the wings and moving limbs. Then, these electrodes are connected to a bug backpack, which is basically a custom-built circuit board with a microchip and radio transmitter receiver on it, along with a tiny power supply. The cyborg bugs can be used in various missions, for reconnaissance in insurgent territory, detecting explosives and drugs, remember, sniffer bees, even search and rescue. With a camera and microphone mounted on each bug, operators will be able to determine the number and positions of terrorists hiding in a building without sending a single soldier inside. In the event of an earthquake, the bugs could scout the city for survivors. And they can be used to bug conversations. Number 5. Operation Big Itch this may sound like the brainchild of some comic book supervillain, but it is actually a field test conducted in September of 1954 by the U.S. government to determine the feasibility of fleas as a vector or carrier for pathogens. The idea behind it involves taking a large number of fleas infected with some deadly virus, like hepatitis or cholera, and then releasing them in a densely populated city to kill hundreds of thousands of people. The test conducted by the U.S. government obviously involved uninfected fleas. The U.S. government, which had recently uncovered tons of documents and years of data regarding entomological warfare in the Nazis' labs and their bizarre attempts to weaponize insects, was seriously thinking about the prospects of using bugs as a biological weapon of mass destruction. Fleas and mosquitoes are well known to be capable vectors of a large number of disease-causing pathogens. The plan was to test the coverage pattern of the fleas by dropping thousands of them inside bombs from an airplane over a testing ground in Utah. Guinea pigs used as test subjects have been placed in a 660-yard grid. During preliminary tests, some of the bombs failed, which resulted in the fleas biting the aircraft crew and pilots. The trials were successful and the operation proved the fleas could not only survive the drop, but could also attach themselves to hosts soon after. Number 4. Operation Big Buzz Another crazy experiment by the U.S. government, this time the targeted hosts were the residents of Georgia, and the vectors were 333,000 yellow fever mosquitoes. Again, the mosquitoes were not infected. The purpose of this mission, just like the previous one, was to test the feasibility of dropping thousands of mosquitoes over a crowded city and estimate the coverage area of the mosquitoes. Carried out in May of 1955, this test dropped 330,000 uninfected yellow fever mosquitoes over the state of Georgia. 
Reports exist of the U.S. military planning to develop an entomological warfare facility capable of producing 100 million mosquitoes infected with yellow fever every month. Operation Big Buzz is among the most bizarre attempts to weaponize insects in the history of mankind. Number 3. Operation Dropkick In a series of tests carried out between April and November of 1956, similar to the previous operations like Big Buzz, the U.S. Army carried out a test to determine the spread patterns, bite intensity, and cost per death, the amount of money required to kill one man with mosquitoes, of yellow fever mosquitoes. The tests were carried out in two separate stages. The first stage released mosquitoes in a residential area in Savannah, Georgia by dropping them from airplanes in parachute-assisted paper bags designed to open upon touching the ground. The second stage released over 600,000 yellow fever mosquitoes over the Avon Air Base area. After dropping the mosquitoes, army officials posing as public health care agents roamed from door to door investigating the effects of the mosquito drops. Although the government maintained that the mosquitoes were not infected with any disease, as many as seven deaths from yellow fever and dengue were reported in the area. This could be the result of introducing so many disease-carrying mosquitoes at once in an area. It's among the most bizarre attempts to weaponize insects. Number 2. Hitler planned to drop malaria bombs on America It really isn't surprising that Hitler would feature in a list of bizarre attempts to weaponize insects. Towards the end of World War II, after the Allied forces captured Germany, some very disturbing information regarding Nazi secret experiments was revealed. Nazi scientists at the Dachau concentration camp under SS head Heinrich Himmler were carrying out experiments to breed a new master race of mosquitoes that would be able to survive the flight over the Atlantic Ocean all the way to America. The big plan was to infect millions of mosquitoes with malaria and then drop the mosquitoes from the air on American civilians, which would have resulted in the death of Americans by the millions. An attack like this was practically unrealistic, owning to the short lifespan of mosquitoes and their sensitivity to high altitude and varying temperatures. Other than that, the Führer himself had ordered that no German was to experiment with biological warfare, as spreading diseases was the work of the Jews, according to Hitler. However, in January of 1942, the leader of the SS, Heinrich Himmler, had ordered the development of an entomological warfare research facility to study the physiology of disease-carrying vectors such as mosquitoes and fleas. It operated within the infamous Deschaux concentration camp, where Jewish prisoners were held and tortured by carrying out horrifying experiments on them. The prisoners were often used as test subjects to find out the killing potential of infected mosquitoes. Initially, the institute was ordered to research how to protect the German people from diseases such as cholera and malaria in case such an epidemic broke out. But towards 1944, when Germany was getting surrounded by both Russian and American troops, the institute desperately changed its objectives from protection to assault. The documents reveal that had the research gone any further, the Allied forces might have been faced with a serious threat. All that Nazi research would soon be collected by American biologists, who used it to boost the U.S. biological warfare program, eventually resulting in tests like Big Buzz and Dropkick. Number 1. The Japanese Unit 731 When it comes to experiments, the Japanese Unit 731 always gets mentioned so it isn't surprising that it ranks number one in our list of bizarre attempts to weaponize insects. Usually, when you think about war crimes in the World War II era, Nazis and the Holocaust come to mind. They killed thousands in concentration camps, gassed millions of Jews and war prisoners, and carried out unspeakable horrors in the form of human experimentation. But what few people realize is that Japan, too, has committed a lot of ghastly atrocities in the form of live human dissection experimentation on babies, artificial insemination, and massacres. When the Japanese army invaded mainland China, they set up a top-secret facility in Pingfan, Manchuria. This facility was the home of the infamous Unit 731, the Japanese equivalent of the Nazi SS Biological Warfare Division. It was a six-square-kilometer facility which was protected by high walls, armed personnel, and electric barbed wire. 
In this facility, the Japanese carried out research on infecting people with cholera, typhoid, plague, and other ghastly diseases. Their favorite medium to do so was the flea. The Japanese biologists estimated that a single flea can release 20,000 to 24,000 plague viruses in a single bite, and can stay active as long as one month. The facility experimented on Chinese prisoners, most of whom were supposedly prisoners and bandits. They also killed Russian, American, and British POWs. Women and children were killed in the thousands. It is known that the facility could produce enough plague and cholera viruses to kill all humans in the world many times over, specifically 300 kilograms of bacteria and viruses a day. The Japanese were even planning to release plague-infected fleas on America from balloons. Over 3,000 people were killed in the facility according to the reports of captured Japanese scientists, but it is clear much more were killed. In fact, the prisoners used as guinea pigs for biological warfare testing were referred to as maruda, or wooden logs, and were disposed of in giant furnaces after they were killed. The facility was known to store infected rats, fleas, and mosquitoes in the thousands. Just before the Allied forces captured the area, the Japanese destroyed the facility to erase all traces of evidence and any research data. The rats, fleas, and mosquitoes that escaped killed numerous people. It is estimated that around 300,000 people, mostly Chinese, were killed by plague-infected fleas and rats. Hey, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel to stay informed about our upcoming videos because more incredible content is on the way.